Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah Antonetti. Getting and just... Rufina Antonetti. Yeah, you know why we're here, right? To talk straight about the Bible, yeah. of course. We're just putting some things together, so we needed about another extra two minutes. But we're good. We're here, and we're having a good time with the Word of God. And uh, you know what? We've been talking about lackadaisicalness. Mmm, sleeping. People like to sleep. You know, I would like to sleep sometimes for a long time. And what we want to do this morning is get into the scripture. Mm -hmm. And let me just go back a little bit and see exactly what we're saying here. Because understand that the scriptures are effective enough to give us the knowledge of God. Amen. So let's go there to Proverbs. We're in chapter 6. Right, we've been talking about chapter six, and we are yesterday we talked about nine, but we're going to read from nine to 11. eleven. How long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you arise? When will you arise out of your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands mm -hmm. to lie down. So shall your poverty come as one who travels, and your need like an armed man. You know what it tells you? That when you're traveling, if you don't have what you need, you will starve or you'll get into trouble mm -hmm. or a person who says they're warriors and they get there and they have nothing to fight with. Mm -hmm. Laziness can destroy your life. Laziness can destroy your life. And your family's and so, life. Uh, well, but yeah, absolutely. We're going to be getting into that too because it's important. But now, you know what I want to do? I want to say something though. Remember that foolishness is bound up in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far away. But I want you to take a look at this and see, what do you see here? <laughs> Just chilling out, remote control. Now, this is not a one-time event. These are, these are people who, this is their lifestyle. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, they, they retire. Mm. We've seen it. And we see it. Mm -hmm. People retire. So what do you do with yourself? Ah, we just stay home, you know, watch TV, hang out, talk to the kids, you know. You're Christians. What are you doing for the kingdom of God? That is our kingdom. Mm. You know, we have to be careful. The kingdom of God is not just about our family. It's about the whole entire church and those out there who need to hear the word of God. We can't lay down or we should not lay down and take it so easy that the time flies by. What about studying the word of God? That happens. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we're so busy on, on cell phones. We're so busy in our rooms, just taking it easy. You know what I'm talking about, right? Ah, let me just lounge around a little bit and uh, take it easy, you know, you know, get on the web, you know, and move around a little bit and here and there. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, four hours pass by. Now you're tired from looking at the screen and you fall asleep. <laughs> mm. That happens to all of us if we're not careful. How long will he stay inactive like that? How long? We, we know we could stay inactive for a long time if we don't watch it. You never know when a real slugger wakes up from his sleep. You know what a slugger is? It's not just a lazy person, but he or she is a hub habitual lazy person can you imagine that habitual when you think that he's awake he can still turn over and say oh come <laughs> on give me just a few more minutes to yeah. sleep see and so we're seeing now that there is an increase of unwillingness to arise and go to work in the kingdom these days just like jeremiah was just mentioning sleep doesn't necessarily mean we're actually sleeping that's right but that we are not doing anything for the edification of the church. Wake up, oh sleeper. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at this guy. He's not sleeping, but he's sleeping. <laughs> That's all you hear. <laughs> you know why? Because he's just chilling on his chair and he's just fiddling around, fiddling around. And I want to ask you a question. Have you ever experienced that for yourself? How much time do we give to God? That's why, you know what? 
my wife and I, we get up early in the morning. We want to seek the face of God in his word because we have a responsibility. Listen to this. We have a responsibility. You know, you know what our responsibility is? To get on Talk Straight Bible and Amen. talk about Amen. the word of God. Amen. For some of us, we come on and this is your daily devotion. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. But we need this. And one thing that we do always encourage is that you seek the word of God for yourself. It's great. And we love you having you and seeing you, but you also have to take a time where you're seeking God for yourself. You know, in Ecclesiastes 10, one, it says as dead flies cause the perfumers ointment to stink and ferment. So a little folly is more rare than wisdom and than honor. Now listen to this. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you're talking about flies. <laughs> you know, you're laying around and your life is starting to stink. Why? Because, I mean, you just don't care about what's going on around you. And let me tell you something. This is the picture of serious depression. Mm. And you know what I've seen most of all? I've seen that people today, they're so involved I'm talking, I'm talking about adults involved in playing games. They spend all this money on their PlayStations and all these other things that are out there. And they, they, they're in front of the TV six, seven, eight, nine hours a day. Mm. Do you know when I see people like that and I talk to them, I say, hey, what's going on? Hey, how you feel, man? That's their wind down time. Yeah, man, their mind. No, that's their wind yeah, down Yeah, that's what time. they say, Why, yeah, wind down. I'm winding down but after some of my... Them, <laughs> they're just like that all the time. It seems like they're sleepy, they're depressed. Folks, we're not made for that. God God caused us and calls us to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know what I learned in studying the Word of God? And I'm going to tie this into your harvest. That the word blessing and the word remember have the same number. It equals 227. Can you imagine how many, how many times would you look in the Bible and see blessing and how it ties to remember? And God says, I've blessed you with seed. Remember to do good with it. Mm -hmm. I have blessed you with a home. Do good with it. You know, you could sow your home. You could sow your car. You can, when I mean plant, is that you do good things with what God has given you. You know, but sometimes we could take a computer, for example, and what do we do? Instead of using it for God and studying, well, okay, I think I'll just kind of lounge around today, a little popcorn, a little drink, but that's not just today, tomorrow, and the next day, and it becomes a habit. You know, someone said it well that's when they said, That's what a slugger is. That's what a, a slugger habitual, is. Yeah. Lazy person. <laughs> habitual. Habitual, lazy person. You know, if you plan a thought, we say this so many times, if you plan a thought, you will reap an act. If you plant your act, you will reap a habit. Mm -hmm. If you plant a habit, you will reap a pattern. If you plant the pattern, you will reap your character. Mm -hmm. But if you plant your character with all this mess, you will reap your destiny. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, where are we going? What should we be doing? I, li I like to I like to um, add about the scripture in, in Ephesians 4.11, because Jeremiah has asked a good question. What should we be doing? Well, we should be edifying the church. And in Ephesians 4.11 and 12, it says, And his gifts to the church were mm. varied, and he himself appointed some as apostles. Mm special messengers and representatives, some as prophets who speak a new message from God to the people, some as evangelists who spread the good news of salvation, and some as pastors, teachers to shepherd and guide and instruct. Mm -hmm. And he did this to fully equip and perfect the saints <laughs> to the works work of, service, of service, to build up the body of Christ, the mm -hmm. church. All, are we all called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers? No. But, but what is your gift? But how he has given us all gifts and have equipped us all for the same reason, 
and for the same purpose, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm. This, For this reason, in Ephesians 5, it says, he says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine upon you and give you light. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp the will of the Lord, what the will of the Lord is. Absolutely. I mean, that says it all in a nutshell. You know, you talked about gifts and what came to mind was Romans chapter 12, verse 6. You know, and that's what we love about our study as we study apart. We come together and how the Holy Spirit just moves. And we talk about gifts. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 speaks exactly to this point. Okay, I'm not a, I'm, a, I'm not an apostle. I'm not one that is sent around the world and you know to establish all these churches or a prophet or an evangelist or pastor teacher, okay? We all can teach in some sense. Mm -hmm. But the teacher in Ephesians is one who develops doctrine. But anyway, look at this. I'm going to read this from the Good News Bible cuz it's so simple. It's so simple. So, we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever sneer, who I'm sorry, yeah, whoever shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Mm -hmm. Whoever shows kindness to others should do it cheerfully. Mm. <laughs> wow. Mm. I mean, talk about this. You know, no room for lack of days of You see people that they're lazy, do something about it. Tell them, hey, get up. Do something with your life. Don't just sit there. There's something for you to do. Notice the shirt says never. Never. And, and so Solomon is telling his son, as, as many of us tell our children, right? Rise up. <laughs> it's time to go to church. Get up. It's time to go to work. Get up. It's time to go to school. Get up. Do some chores. <laughs> Looks like this these parents are really upset with his their son. Do something. <laughs> you cannot be sleeping while I'm awake. You cannot be sleeping while the day is going. Your whole day is passing by. Isn't that what we used to tell our children? Yes. We, we used to wake them Not up. Not on our watch. Yeah, we used to tell our children. <laughs> we used to wake them up and say, hey, wake up. The day has come mm -hmm. before you. Before you. <laughs> the day has come Folks, before you. we have an obligation to the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom? To use the gifts that God has given us to bring encouragement, mm -hmm. to serve, to help people. You know, that's why it's all about like what Christopher Wesley just put on there. He said, therefore, the days are evil. Help, guide, protect, and direct us, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, Mick Shack. <laughs> Glad I can tune in this morning. Been missing the last few. Amen. Wow. Well, we're glad that you're here with us this yes, morning. Yes, 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 yes. And I, I believe that's, yes, that is my nephew. That is my nephew. Yes, well, welcome. God bless you. You know, the whole concept here is that we are to work together. I love this song. It says, um, sometimes it's hard for me to understand why we pull away from each other so easily, even though we're walking the same road. Yet we build dividing walls between each other and ourselves. Mm. But I, I don't mind. I don't care what label you may wear. If you believe in Jesus, you belong with me. The bond we share is all I care to see. It will change the world forever. If you would join with me, join and sing, sing, you're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us. 
when we're walking side by side, as long as there is love, we will stand. I was just, Amen. those words came back to my mind as a song. And let me tell you, if what, what we do is not about for the kingdom of God and we're just lying around, we are in trouble. Let me just share these quick words for you. Temptation to sleep knocks on the door every day. <laughs> Temptation knocks on the door of every human life. And watch this. And it is the consequence of the fallen nature that plagues us daily. What is the, hey, come on, man. A little twinkling of the thumb. Mm -hmm. Take it That's easy. What the scripture you know? says, yeah. But then also, temptation is to taste. It, it, it eludes you. It wants, you know, it, it seduces you. Come on and taste it. Mm. Mm. Come on and taste it. There, there's, no, there's no problem with that. Just here, a little bit. Do not allow yourself the forbidden fruit of illegal rest. You know what I said, right? Mm -hmm. Illegal rest. God says rest, but then when we decide to over rest and do nothing for God, he says, that's illegal. Mm -hmm. That is lawlessness. Just like Eve was lured through seductive impressions, deceived into wanting the forbidden fruit mm -hmm. is the point of sin entering into our lives to destroy us. Once we taste of that fruit, we become enticed to the point where we are captivated and imprisoned. Wow. Yeah, that thought came to me this morning. I said, I better write it down. Because you know what? We are prone to fall in to lackadaisicalness. Well, don't be led by your emotions, folks. It's always there. At first, it always seems okay. It comes with a great amount of emotion and mm -hmm. excitement. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, hey, enjoy. But the end brings us to distraction. We forget about the harvest of God and do not plant seeds for a better tomorrow. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Do you hear? Don't you want seeds for a better tomorrow? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. What are we going to do? People are dying. We're decaying away in our society and we're sitting doing nothing. Wow. I want to, can I quote one more song? It came to mind. Absolutely. There's a song by Keith Green that I learned a long time ago. And I hope I got it right. It says, do you see, do you see all the people sinking down? Don't you care? Don't you care? Are you going to let them drown? How can we be so numb not to care if they come? We close our eyes and pretend we're just done. He says, but he brings people to your door and you turn them away as you smile and say, God bless you, be at peace, and don't help them. You just weep. Mm. Jesus came to your door, but you left them out on the street. Then he says, open up, open up, give yourselves away. You see the needs, you hear the cries. So how can you delay? Mm. God's calling and you're the one, but like Jonah, you run. He told you to speak, but you keep holding it in. The world is sleeping in the dark that the church just can't mm. fight because mm. it's asleep in the light. How can we be so dead when we've been so well wow. fed? Jesus rose from the grave and you you can't even get out of bed. Look what Isaiah 61 through two says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. In fact, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the people, but the Lord will rise up upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. The only way is through God. We are sleeping in the light. In the light. <laughs> we are sleeping in the light. In the light. Taking it easy. People trying to build. Listen to this. I remember Pastor Jerry. He was he's my first pastor. I, my only pastor. He's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. He was because he went with the Lord. Wonderful man of God. But he, he wrote a book, Time for War. And he said, people are busy building condominiums in the middle of a battle zone mm. when there's work to be done. Wow. Well, folks, that's it for today. Until we meet again. Shalom.